first things that struck me when I started playing Half-Life Alex is the dirt under my fingernails. Usually, virtual hands are either low-detailed ghostly apparitions or gloved, but this finely detailed grit tells us something about Alex Vance as a character. She's a scrappy survivor raised in the aftermath of the Seven Hour War when the alien combine conquered Earth, and not all buttoned down like that MIT-educated nerd Dr. Gordon Freeman. The next thing that stood out was- OH GOD WHAT THE HELL IS THAT? Okay, yeah, this game is incredible. Between the newfound sense of scale and the distinctive, otherworldly sound design, Half-Life Alex had me immersed from the get-go. But aside from the new VR perspective, Alex feels very much like a traditional Half-Life game. It's set up as a linear series of areas, starting with a City 17 neighborhood and then going underground through industrial areas like a distillery, high-tech combine facilities, slimy alien nests, and more. Each chapter of this 15-hour campaign feels substantially different from the last, and, true to Half-Life form, I'd sometimes wander around an area wondering if I'd hit a bug that prevented me from progressing, only to figure out that the solution was a trick that had been explicitly taught to me earlier, or was pretty clearly marked once you knew what to look for. You just need to learn to think a little bit differently. Combat is a major part of the journey, but so is puzzle solving. And I mean both the environmental kind, where you figure out where to go next, and some clever, very 3D hacking puzzles you solve using Alex's multi-tool to unlock various combine technology. It's a great mix that keeps the pace going strong. This may be a prequel story that takes place five years before Half-Life 2, but you should absolutely be up to date on the events of the series through Episode 2 before you play. You've had 13 years, it's time. Alex's quest starts out as a straightforward mission to rescue her father, and turns into a heist to capture a combined superweapon stashed inside a massive floating vault. But of course it's not that simple. Without spoiling anything, the ending is fantastic and a must-see for anyone who's invested in this story. For the whole trip, your remote, lovably oblivious sidekick Russell chatters away in your ear with some laugh-out-loud gags about vodka and sandwiches, among a great many other things. Alex, great! Okay, let's... wait, my drone's okay, right? Nope, it exploded. I'm fine, by the way. His rapport with Alex gives her a chance to shine as a character as well, showing some of her idealism and naivety about the world before the war. Of course, when the mood gets creepy, Russ's signal tends to get blocked out, which lets the atmosphere get fantastically spooky. Detail is one of the things that Valve does best. Environments look amazing. You can see the hairs on the legs of the bloodthirsty, turducken-sized headcrabs as they leap at your face trying to eat your brain, although counting hairs is hardly the first of your concerns at a moment like that. And look at this gross healing station. It's all remarkable, and so is the actual way you interact with everything. The vast majority of stuff that isn't nailed down can be picked up and tossed around. But even better, your hands collide with everything realistically instead of passing through. This makes a huge difference in establishing a feeling of presence in this world. The gravity gun from Half-Life 2 hasn't been invented yet, so Alex straps on some prototype gravity gloves. They're not nearly as powerful as the gun, but much more compact, always on, and still extremely useful. Just point at any object, make a fist to grip it, and yoink! It's the simplest of Jedi tricks, but it works great after some practice, and you'll never have to bend down again. There are only three weapons, or five, counting grenades, in Half-Life Alex, but even the basic pistol you're handed from the get-go has a powerful punch to it. The catch is that reloading is a lot more involved than you may be used to, and there are some clever nuances to mastering it. Keeping your cool as you reload in the middle of the fight can be really tough and tense. Gun upgrades change things up in meaningful ways. The shotgun's autoloader makes it amazingly powerful and is really cool to watch. And the laser sight was the biggest game changer for me. Suddenly having pinpoint accuracy from the hip feels almost like a cheat mode after having to slowly and deliberately line up your shots to avoid wasting ammo. Resin is the currency you use to buy these upgrades, and searching for it took me back to childhood easter egg hunts. A bunch of it is low-hanging fruit meant for everybody to find, but if you learn how Valve's designers love to play with perspective to hide the good stuff from casual passers-by, you'll find loads more of it. Careful exploration is nearly always rewarded. Just like in previous Half-Life games, you have to move around a whole lot in Half-Life Alex, and there are several options that allow for everything from playing seated to full room-scale immersion. I played exclusively standing and with the free movement controls, using the left thumbstick to move around like a regular first-person game, but teleporting is also an option. You do have to jump over gaps from time to time either way, but pulling down on the right stick allows you to point at a target and release to teleport there as though you'd actually performed a feat of athleticism. Oh, and if you don't have a $1,000 Valve Index, don't worry. Half-Life Alex will work just fine on any Vive or Oculus headset too, and plenty of others.
Back when VR first became a real thing, and we all started spitballing about which game worlds we'd most like to be fully immersed in, Half-Life topped my list, tied with Bioshock. It took a few years, but Half-Life Alex has realized that potential, and it's the best VR shooter I've ever played. With it, Valve has set a new bar for VR interactivity, detail, and level design, showing what can happen when a world-class developer goes all in on the new frontier of technology. In a lot of ways, it feels like a game from the future, and one that the rest of VR gaming will likely take a good long while to match, much less surpass. For more on Half-Life, check out 13 minutes of Alex's gameplay with Valve's commentary, a rare interview with Gabe Newell, and Half-Life 2's developers reacting to a speedrun. And for everything else, stick with IGN.